right. If you take your Bible and look with me, please, in Genesis chapter number 1. If you have a Bible with you, if not, I'd like to encourage you to listen carefully. We won't be here long, but we'll be hearing an important message from God's Word, the Bible. We've just started this new series of messages entitled, Great Stories from the Old Testament. And Lord willing, we'll cover... Ten great stories from that part of the Bible. Now there's, obviously, there's a lot more great stories than just those ten. But we'll try to focus on ten of those stories for the next ten weeks. And then, Lord willing, a little bit later in the year, we'll have great stories from the New Testament. Alright, your Bibles are open to Genesis, chapter number one. And uh, follow along if you have your Bible with you. If not, I'd like to encourage you to listen carefully. Verse 1, the Bible says this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. This morning, Lord willing, our story for today is the story of creation. From Genesis chapter number 1. Now may we pray before we get into the message. Heavenly Father, we just welcome you into our room this hour. We're so thankful that God is here. Lord, really, in our own efforts, in our own condition, Lord, there's nothing special about you, but there's, every, there's nothing special about us, but there's everything wonderful about you. And we just invite you to take over now and to preach to your people. Father, I pray that you would get a hold of our hearts today, whether we are longtime members of Lulatin Baptist Church, whether we're new Christians, or whether it be first-time visitors here in the service. Dear God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would get a hold of our hearts. I pray that you would give us a fresh glimpse of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would give us hearts that are easily led by the Spirit of God. Please open our eyes now that we might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Show the audience today. Lord, show us what we should glean from this message. We pray this in Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You all, I want to share with you, first of all, from this little passage in Genesis chapter 1, I want to share with you that the, this story speaks of a creator, does it not? This story speaks of creator called God. I want to remind you this morning that there really is a God. Amen? Amen. There is a God in heaven. Before we go any farther, and I think the Lord just wanted me to, just to add this in right now. It's really not even in my notes. But I want to remind you today, uh, dear friend, that the word God in the Old Testament, when you see it spelled like that, with a capital G, a little O, a little D, it comes from the Hebrew word Elohim. And y'all, the word Elohim, that's the Hebrew word for God. And that word means the strong one. It's good to know today that there is a strong one up in heaven. And he's not out to make your life miserable. He's not out to give you a hard time. He loves you. He's strong. He's, he's the strong one. And friend, whenever you start feeling knocked down... Whenever you start feeling weary, when you start feeling weak and overwhelmed, I want to remind you to look up and call on Elohim, the God of the Bible. He's the strong one. The Bible says he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. You remember that about God, the Creator. The Bible does not try to prove that God exists. It just presents Him. I love it how it just starts off there in verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning God. And, 
And I would encourage you, if you've never memorized Genesis 1-1, I'd like to encourage you to do so. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible doesn't start out by saying, oh, by the way, do you realize there is a God? Or let's give you some evidence for the existence of God. No, the Bible just tells us there is a God. There is a God in heaven, the Bible uh, tells us in Daniel chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, the Bible says, for there is one God. Hebrews 11.6 tells us this, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that come, for he that uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. We must believe that God exists. In fact, in James chapter two and verse nineteen, the Bible tells us this: Thou believest that there is one God, you do well. Now hear that. The Bible says, if you believe that there is one God, you're doing good. That's right to believe that. But the rest of that verse says this. The devils also believe and tremble. Friend, even the devils know that there is a God. And by the way, there's only one God. Amen? Amen. One God manifests in three persons. God, watch this now. When we see Genesis chapter 1, we learn this about God. God delights in taking nothing and making something out of it. Now, friends, that's going to help someone in here today. God delights, and, and boys, if you need to, I'm going to ask if you would maybe just split up, and maybe some of you sit on, on uh, Brother Scott's side. Uh, and, uh, if you guys want to split them up some, that'd be fine. Thank you. But God delights in making something out of nothing. Look at that word with me, if you would please, there in verse 1. In the beginning, God created. Y'all, that word created, it comes from a Hebrew word which expresses the idea of creating something out of nothing. Don't miss the point, y'all. God knows how to take nothing and make something very good out of it. Because right there in verse 1, it says God created the heaven and the earth. He created it out of nothing. Look at the, that's the first verse of the chapter. Look at the last verse of chapter 1. Genesis 1, verse 31, the Bible says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So when God had completed the six days of creation, let me see if I can try to remember them all. On day one, God made light. On day two, God created the firmament, or we would call it today the atmosphere of the sky. On day three, God made the dry land, the seas, and the plains. On day four, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. On day five, God made the fish and the birds. And on day six, God made animals and man. Now listen, y'all, watch this. When God had finished making all those things, he saw that it was very good. Can I help you with this today? Y'all watch this carefully. This old world and the devil and even our deceitful and desperately wicked hearts, they'll tend to tell us that, man, you ain't nothing. You're a failure. Your life is a big zero. You've messed up. You're worthless. I'm telling you, this old world and the devil and even our hearts will try to make us believe that. That we're a failure, a big zero, that we're nothing. But I want to remind you today, friend, and you hear this, young people, senior citizens, you listen to your preacher. The God of the Bible knows how to take nothing in the eyes of the world and make something very good out of it. Amen. Don't you ever let your heart and this old world and Satan himself tell you that your life is ruined and you're messed up and nothing good is left in you. God can make a difference in your life. That's the God 
of the Bible. God delights in making something new. When you read the scriptures, I mean, there's no record of a heaven and earth existing before. God made something new. God does something different. Hey, you know what's really cool? We, we were talking in the membership class today that, that Lulatin Baptist Church, it was formed, as the best as we know, it came to an existence in 1900. There was a First Baptist Church of Lulatin here in 1900. It eventually switched its name to Lulatin Baptist. And, uh, you know, a, a lot has happened in the 120 years since the church came into existence, right? A lot of different preachers, a lot of coming and going, a lot of different changes, a lot of, uh, 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 but a lot of things that just kind of been, are the same. But please know that every once in a while, God might want to bring in something new. And let's not hinder him from doing that. Because when it's all said and done, what God does is very good. And what God does tends to last. Isn't that good? I hope you'll remember that today, that this story, the story of creation, it speaks of a creator. Hey, uh, can I just share this thought with you real quick? Have you ever wondered where did God come from? I mean, it starts off, in the beginning, God. Oh, well, okay, well, how did he get here? Where did God come from? It's really cool, y'all. This simple little verse teaches us something. That God existed before time, before space, and before matter. You know how we know that? Because in that little verse right there, Genesis 1.1, it says, in the beginning... Y'all, that's time. God created the heaven, that space, and the earth. That's matter. God created time, space, and matter. And really, you think about it, I like how one Christian leader, one science teacher who was a Christian, he taught this, he said, when we consider time, space, and and matter, that's really the trinity of trinities, is how he described it. Time is comprised of past, present, future. Space is comprised of length, width, and height. Matter is comprised of solid, liquid, and gas. God created all of those. Isn't it cool? And he is not limited by any of them. He's not limited by time, by space, or by matter. So to think, where did God come from? Well, he's just always been. He's the one who created everything. I want you to notice this with me, too, in verse 2. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It's interesting. Verse 1 tells us God created the heaven and the earth, and then verse 2 gives a description which is not very exciting. It's kind of dark. Kind of negative. The earth was out without form and void and darkness. Does that sound very exciting to y'all? I mean, without form and void, that means empty. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. That just doesn't sound... Very exciting. But then look what happens. Verse number two tells us at the end of the verse, it says the Spirit of God moved. Yeah. You see, sometimes I wonder if, if the Lord just created, if God just created things like that with it being without form and void and dark, if he just created it that way so that we could all see what life is like without the Holy Spirit of God. If we try to go on in our own ways, and in our own flesh, and in our own efforts, it'll wind up being corruption. It'll be without form, and void, and dark. But when the Spirit of God is invited to come in, when the Spirit of God shows up, when the Spirit of God moves, 
Here's what happens. You read the, the, the following verses. First of all, light comes down. Heaven shows up. And life comes in. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Hey, if we try to run a ministry, if we try to run our homes, if we try to run our lives without the Spirit of God, it's going to be dark and dreary and it'll wear us out. But all oh, that we would invite the Holy Spirit of God to come in. He'll bring down light. He'll bring down a little bit of heaven. And he'll bring in life. Would you say amen right there? Amen. Secondly, if you'll notice this with me. This story only lasted for six days. The story of creation. It wasn't a very long story, was it? Here's what we learned from this, y'all. When God is ready, he can make good things happen very quickly. I want to encourage you, beloved. Live, listen to this. Now, you're going to want to write this down. Live in the expectation of suddenly. God tends to work suddenly. I know how uh, 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 many of you brothers and sisters in Christ, you have a desire for this, this church just to uh, uh, catch on fire and to uh, just to go out and make a difference in the woods around Lulatin and to be used of God to touch lives and reach young people and help families and strengthen the believers. Amen. That's what we'd all like to see happen. Amen. Amen. We want to be careful. If we try to do it in the flesh, it's going to wind up being a ministry that's without form and void and dark. But if we'll invite the Spirit of God to come in and to move on us, now catch this, God can do things suddenly. Listen to this. And here, don't miss this. In the Gospel of, I'm sorry, in the book of Acts, and the folks in the membership class, we were really reading this just today. In Acts chapter 9, it says, Saul of Tarsus, he was riding towards Damascus. His intent was to go and arrest Christians, wasn't he? And to bring them back to Jerusalem to put them on trial. But there in the beginning of that story in Acts chapter 9, as he was riding that donkey towards Damascus, the Bible says, and suddenly a light shone from heaven. And the Lord spoke out to Saul. And oh, God quickly turned that man's life into the Apostle Paul. Live in the ex expectation of suddenly. Look, if you'll hold your place there in Genesis, and uh, let's go on over to it for just a moment. In fact, we'll be finishing up here shortly. You don't have to worry about Genesis anymore. Let's just go to Exodus for a moment. Uh, Exodus chapter 5. Right after Genesis, there is what book, y'all? Exodus. Exodus. Exodus chapter 5, and look how God can make things happen so quickly. Here we're reading the story in Exodus 5 of how Moses and Aaron had been sent by God to go to Pharaoh and to say, here's a message from Jehovah, from the Lord, let my people go. And Pharaoh's attitude was like, I don't know you, and I certainly don't know the Lord, so I'm not going to let your people go. In fact, y'all must be getting lazy, so I'm going to make the work harder on these slaves, these Hebrew children. So things quickly went downhill for Moses and Aaron and the people of Israel. They came with a message from God to Pharaoh saying, let our people go, and they walked away with life was even now tougher than before. Look what happens if you would pick up in verse number 22. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore or why have you so in evil entreated this people? Why is it that you sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he hath done evil to this people, neither have you delivered your people at all. Do you see what Moses is saying there, beloved? He's saying, Lord, you sent me here. I was doing fine out there in the desert taking care of those sheep. But you sent me back here to Egypt to speak to Pharaoh, to tell him that God wants him to let the people go. 
And Lord, I did what you said. I showed up. I preached your message. And ever since then, everything's gotten worse. And you still haven't gotten our people out of slavery. Ever felt that way? Yeah. Look at the very next verse. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shall you see what I will do to Pharaoh. Boy, did the Lord do something wonderful. It's as if the Lord let that preacher and his brother Aaron show up to the people first of all and preach their message and let the people see that nothing happened when man showed up. Hey, people, I want you all to see. Moses and Aaron have showed up. They, they preached this message. They've confronted Pharaoh. But listen, these men show up and nothing has happened. But now, I, the Lord, am about to show up. Live in the expectation of suddenly. Do what you know to do and just wait on the Lord. And hey, in a matter of six days, he knows how to make a universe. That is very good. In a matter of a short amount of time, he can make a difference in your home. In a short amount of time, he can make a difference in your ministry. Live in the expectation of suddenly. One more quick thought about that point, then we must move on. If you think about the story in Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2, and how God created the universe, did you ever notice something about that? He didn't need our help. He did it all. It was very good. And you know, I, I know that the school textbooks say that you know, the, the earth and the universe is billions and billions of years old. Really, when you study the Bible, you learn from the Bible that the earth is actually only about 6,000 or 7,000 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you might be thinking, that might cause your mind to jump ahead and think, well, okay, Pastor Steve, what about all the dinosaurs? But you'll keep coming in a few weeks, Lord willing. We'll talk about the story of Noah and the flood. We'll talk about that. But if you study the Bible, this, this world is not as old as those evolutionists say it is. But what God did 6,000 years ago, it's still around today. And it's very good. Is anybody in a hurry to you know, leave... A in a way, yeah, I want to go to heaven, but I'm in no rush to die. Amen? Amen. It, this life here can be pretty good. And God didn't need our help. Then finally, this story, the story of creation, if you'll notice this, this story was confirmed by Jesus Christ. Look with me, if you would please, and, and listen carefully. We're about done. Look over in the New Testament now. We're done with Genesis 1. Look with me, if you would please, in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse number 6. Jesus is talking, and watch what he says. Mark 10, 6, he says, But evolution created this whole world. Is that what he says? says, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. You know what he's telling us right there? He's saying the story you read back in Genesis 1, it's exactly what happened. God is the one who created. Now what's really cool, if, if you'll recall, when we studied about the, the Old Testament last week, we said that the Old Testament, it'll always connect you to Jesus Christ. <laughs> The Old Testament will always point you to Jesus Christ. That's why we're so excited at the end of next month having Christ in the Passover, that special service. The Passover was a special festival observed in the Old Testament. But the Passover meal, it points to Jesus Christ. And if you'll come for that service on the 28th of March, you'll see how that Old Testament ceremony points to Jesus. And even the creation story 
points to Jesus Christ. Look with me to begin with, if you would please, in John chapter number 1. John chapter number 1. And verse number 1. The Bible says this. Boys and girls, you're listening so well, by the way. I greatly appreciate that. I encourage you just to listen a little bit longer. John 1, 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. And do you see how it's a capital W? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now look at this. Look at verse 3. All things were made by Him. And the word Him refers back not to God, but to the Word, capital W. All things were made by the Word, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Do you know what the Bible teaches in the New Testament? That when the God of the Old Testament created the, the heaven and the earth, Jesus Christ was involved? If you have any doubt, look at one last passage. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians is a little bit more trickier to find in your New Testament. There's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Listen to these words now. This will be our final passage for today. Let God speak to your heart as we read from his book. Colossians 1 verse 12, the Bible says, Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath redeemed, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. By the way, y'all, there in verse 13, you know what, a Christian should not be afraid of the dark. Why? Because we've been delivered from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom, that's talking about God's Son, in God's Son we have redemption through His blood. You know, when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, even the forgiveness of sins. Look at verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? It's still, the Bible's still talking about Jesus. It says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. When we see the Son of God, we see the, uh, we see the God who cannot be seen. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Verse 16. For by Him, that's by the Son of God, by Jesus, were all things created. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him. That's still going back to the Son of God, a reference to Jesus. All things were created by Him and for Him. Friend, do you see there? You were created by the Lord Jesus, and you were created for the Lord Jesus. And look at this verse 17. And He is before all things. Where did God come from? Well, He was before everything else. He was before time, space, and matter. And I love this. It says, and by Him all things consist. You know what that means? That by Jesus Christ, everything is held together. Watch this. Have you ever felt like you're falling apart? Let's remember this. That Jesus Christ is the one that holds you together. Do you know him today? We've been talking about the story of creation. I want to quote to you one last verse. You don't have to look there. But listen carefully. Second Tim, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us this. Therefore, if any person be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In Genesis 1, we see that God created the heaven and the earth. But in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we learn that if you are in Christ, what that means is if you have said yes to Jesus, if you have received him as your personal savior, if you've been born again, he has created you a new person. 
I like this thought. Your life can be different. When you say yes to Jesus, the Bible way, he makes you a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. He can make your life different. Are you looking for a change? Are you looking for a different direction? A new life? You just need to look to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You bow your heads with me. Close your eyes. Thank you for listening so well. Thank you for being so patient. Miss Jessica is going to come up here and turn off the camera. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed and the camera turned off. If you would say, Pastor Steve, 